greetings to all the participants from Epicon 2021. My name is uh, Prashant, and over the next 15 minutes, I hope to share with you some insights uh, emerging from a five year uh, fellowship with the DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance uh, on tribal health. And the purpose of sharing these insights from this five year engagement is to uh, mainly advance our understanding of the social determinants of uh, tribal health. Um, so this project was called the Theta Project um, towards health equity and transformative action on tribal health. And it involved work uh, in uh, with uh, remote forest associated tribal communities in Karnataka, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh and Western Arunachal Pradesh. So one thing that's uh, probably uh, very uh, clear uh, is that uh, tribal populations uh, across the world are behind everyone everywhere. Now, this is a quotation uh, from uh, a commentary uh, that appeared in the Lancet uh, in response to Anderson et al's meta-analysis of uh, various health outcomes of tribal populations across the world, the largest ever data set of indigenous people uh, across the world that they assembled and put together. It included data from India as well. And uh, of course they tracked um, health outcomes such as infant mortality, maternal mortality and such. Uh, but we know from both qualitative uh, and social science literature as well as uh, carefully quantified epidemiological literature that uh, tribal populations health status and health care uh, seems to be worse off um, uh, along with various other human development uh, uh, indicators. Now, um, in order to advance uh, um, why things are the way they are uh, and how this comes about, one needs to take a step back and um, probably address um, the underlying drivers of this poor health. And often uh, the, they, there are severe methodological constraints in conventional mainstream uh, epidemiological methods in order to be able to undertake uh, these kind of um, uh, uh, these kind of uh, to to answer these kind of questions, which ask about why things are the way they are, and what are the processes that underlie uh, certain um, societal uh, patterns that we come about. So uh, this is a this is a framework that we use in uh, in what we call health policy and health systems uh, research, uh, which is an emerging field that tries to build a body of knowledge based on a question. So the, the field is built around using any uh, method, uh, especially methods from the social sciences, but also epidemiological, uh, mainstream epidemiological and quantitative methods in order to answer questions that have social relevance. So, and, and in this framework, for example, you can look at the kind of multidisciplinary um, uh, type of questions that one can ask about anything within health policy and health systems. So you, you could have descriptive questions, you could have uh, questions that understand influence of one variable or an, over another, you could have exploratory questions, explanatory questions, questions that build theories on why things are the way they are and go into mechanisms of these things. So if you take this kind of a systems view on uh, tribal health, um, one of the key things that you find is uh, missing in, in core uh, public health literature is the, uh, is the um, scarcity of um, wider theoretical uh, understanding, wider theoretical knowledge and awareness when we undertake research on tribal health. So um, in the center, for example, uh, is a recent uh, open letter that we, uh, we wrote mainly addressing uh, uh, you know, epidemiologists um, where uh, a lot of inquiry tends to focus on the individual, forgetting that the individual is part of a wider system. It could be the family system. It could be the neighborhood system. It could be uh, a certain particular population group or label that the person belongs to or the wider policy environment. And often this is because it is methodologically inconvenient to be able to characterize some of those into our methods. So uh, often these very powerful influences of individual behavior get left out and we end up doing individual surveys and we end up laying the blame, so to speak, on individual knowledge, individual awareness, et cetera, without paying attention to the wider social processes. So uh, there need, in order to address and understand social determinants of tribal health, there needs to be firstly an acknowledgement and awareness 
of the wider social processes and historical processes that have shaped the current situation of uh, Adivasi and tribal communities um, in the way they are. So in uh, Theta project, what did we do? We tried to uh, look at um, uh, the patterns what, uh, and we used quantitative epidemiological methods to understand and describe the inequity patterns at a very fine scale. And then we used wider social science uh, inquiry methods, uh, which use qualitative data uh, like case studies, ethnographic inquiry, et cetera, to explain. And in this second objective, we tried to leverage um, uh, frameworks such as the social determinants of health framework, particularly to Adivasi settings. And finally, you can also use research as a way to intervene and, uh, and create what we call transformational knowledge, knowledge that is co-produced with uh, communities and various other uh, implementers. So um, uh, like I said, uh, the quantitative, uh, uh, so here on the right side is the protocol uh, of Theta project, which is uh, uh, available and can be accessed. But the effort here was to try and create finer scale data. And why, what is the need for this? Because NFHS tends to aggregate tribal data as ST. And the label ST is very, very, it's very socio-politically constructed. So it doesn't give us much uh, uh, insight into who are all these different ST communities and ST communities in India are very diverse. Like you can imagine, take Rajasthan, Arunachal and Kerala, for example, these are very different contexts and all we have is ST data from them. We do not know the particular history of these communities and what is this local context? What is the contribution of the state? Um, what are the type of inequalities within ST? or between ST and non-ST communities living in the same geography. So these are all kind of questions for which currently data does not exist. So we try to um, uh, uh, create this kind of uh, data in, uh, uh, in the Theta project. I'm trying to get the slide to move. Yeah. So uh, the survey locations included uh, very diverse settings. Uh, here, for example, settings around Kanha in uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Gajagadi, a Katanaika uh, tribal settlement in Northern Kerala, uh, Kadakalakindi, which is a, a Soliga settlement in, um, in uh, BRT Tiger Reserve in Southern Karnataka. And uh, here, another for illustration purposes, another settlement, uh, a remote settlement called Nere in Pake Tiger Reserve in Western Arunachal Pradesh. So we used, uh, of course, uh, a cloud-based uh, uh, tool to capture uh, data. Uh, it was uh, in local language. And we created a geospatial data set uh, which has uh, uh, a lot of variables, many of them uh, based on DHS and NFHS tools. So I won't go into great detail about these, uh, but the idea is that what do we gain from um, this kind of quantitative characterization? What we gain is only uh, an understanding of the pattern. What is the kind of uh, pattern with respect to inequalities. And, and that's, that's the strength of epidemiological methods. They give us a very thorough understanding of the patterns of inequalities. And there are, uh, of course, because of the way we collected our data and we did the sampling, we are able to also make assertions uh, within site or within uh, tribe uh, because of the way we uh, conducted the sampling and the way we organized uh, the study design uh, and uh, and uh, today across uh, um, um, sorry um, across uh, this uh, data set which covers 217 households 217 settlements across four states we have a data set that allows us to compare between and within uh, uh, these sites and um, settlements we of course also collected biomedical data to characterize dyslipidemia sickle cell anemia, et cetera, um, which I won't be going into detail in this uh, presentation. Um, again, other kind, another kind of looking at inequality patterns, of course, is uh, to look at secondary data. And here, the limitation, like I mentioned earlier, is, um, is the fact that uh, you do not have data of greater resolution than ST. Um, but in this, uh, in this recent interesting uh, paper, what we try to still do is to look at intersectional subgroups. What is the, if we create various intersectional subgroups between uh, ST and uh, by caste, by location, uh, by gender, um, uh, by location in urban and rural, um, by uh, 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 gender and uh, socioeconomic status, uh, and if we create across these four labels, if you create intersectional subgroups, what are the kind of patterns that emerge? So, for example, are um, uh, ST communities who are located in cities 
for whatever reasons, better off because now they have moved to cities because that's usually what we are told, you know, uh, urbanization and modernization will bring the benefits of, uh, you know, better healthcare and education, et cetera. But what is the pattern you see? Um, unsurprisingly or surprisingly, you find that the disadvantage does not get neutralized merely because people change their location. Their social markers continue to uh, create unfairness um, within these communities. So if you then go to the process, why are things the way they are? What is the reason why some communities tend to um, consistently fall back, consistently to, uh, to attract uh, uh, poor health outcomes, you see that the drivers of these are structural. They are uh, uh, built into uh, processes that are wider than the individual and they need to be targeted in order to create a transformational change. So how can we study such processes? Uh, and uh, one of the ways to uh, study these uh, processes um, is uh, uh, what, I, uh, what I said earlier, uh, uh, an awareness of the history of these communities and, uh, and a wider reading of social science and development literature as to why tribal communities, uh, what are the kind of social adversities and historical adversities they have faced over time. And these vary from one community to another. You know, I mean, uh, uh, if you see there are tribal communities across the, uh, across the country almost, and each of them has a very particular history. Some of them have uh, feudal uh, kind of relationships with other communities. Uh, some of them face uh, uh, discrimination, uh, uh, caste-based discrimination. Many others do not. For example, in the Northeast, you have a very different situation where many communities that are called Adivasi who have moved uh, as laborers uh, to Assam and uh, other Northeastern states, today do not have a, a local ST status and have hence, um, uh, you know, uh, face, uh, face uh, um, difficulties and adversities. So the, 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 the whole label tribe is a very contested label and within public health too, we need to develop a greater awareness of the theory and uh, history and the social context in order to move uh, further. So in the lack of this kind of theorization, what we have is very large stereotypical kind of notions. Oh, they are far away. Oh, culturally, they're very distinct. Uh, oh, they also want TV, mobile. Are they really tribal? You know, this kind of uh, characterization, which, is, uh, which demonstrates um, our own, within the research community, our own lack of understanding of the social uh, processes that underlie uh, tribal health. So um, without uh, going into great uh, detail, uh, what I will uh, introduce here uh, on the left side is uh, an adaptation of the social determinants of health framework of the WHO. Many of you must be familiar with it. We need to adapt and uh, uh, many of these uh, processes and boxes in the social determinants of health to the Adivasi context. For example, forest conservation regulation and priorities. Um, district and state uh, priorities. So these are all important things to study. So when we say tribal health, it's not only to go far away and uh, work with individual tribal communities and uh, uh, measure their knowledge, awareness, attitude, etc., but also to work with powerful policymakers and the uh, conservationists and others who also tend to shape tribal health agenda in a certain way. So um, uh, this is what uh, uh, one of the review that we recently published tried to do, uh, to try and gather the wider historical processes. Um, you can also look at uh, 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 social science contribution in understanding remoteness. Remoteness or living far away is often understood as a uh, geographical or a locational uh, concept, but it could also be a social concept. It could also be uh, for example, the history of uh, relocation and coercive practices uh, for conservation purposes, which has caused disadvantage and which has caused remoteness to be enforced, where remoteness does not become a choice. So there are case study uh, techniques and approaches which can be tried to uh, understand further as to how these kind of uh, uh, social processes uh, um, uh, shape current uh, tribal health uh, and tribal health uh, status. This is some of the work that we are doing um, in, um, in uh, the Theta project. Um, so uh, coming to action, um, PAR here refers to participatory action uh, research. So action has to be co-created. So, uh, and this is extremely important. We need to figure out ways in which people like us in public health can engage meaningfully, can engage with dignity and respect with uh, tribal communities. 
Uh, and this is uh, something that is not taught in medical schools, not taught in social work schools. So this is something that we have to learn and practice. So uh, towards that, there is a small emerging body of knowledge that is coming up uh, around participatory action research, which uh, I am I'm, uh, I'm, uh, sharing as uh, probably the only way forward in terms of acting on tribal health. Um, to sort of conclude uh, 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 what I have been building now, in order to understand and act on social determinants of health, we need to move, uh, we need to locate our research not only at individual tribal people uh, who we see as having poor health, but we need to try and research, address and understand um, how uh, healthcare, health and healthcare organizations and social institutions and structures and policies also shape the realities of these individuals in a certain way. And only then uh, is uh, what uh, we will be able to understand and address um, the social determinants of health. And that's what we call transformational knowledge, which means, which, which means knowledge that can transform and which has to uh, take into account lay knowledge and traditional knowledge on one hand, as well as organized uh, knowledge that comes from a wide variety of disciplines in order to make uh, an impact on tribal um, health. Um, um, and in order to do this, we need to look at learning sites rather than projects. So, so uh, a long-term engagement, a long-term trust building and engagement and partnership with various communities uh, rather than uh, parachute projects where uh, an interesting project is written, funded, data is collected and brought back to a city or a, a headquarters where all the analysis is done, which is uh, often uh, the nature of uh, uh, research in public health, which we should move away uh, from. Um, I will not uh, go into this due to lack of time. So uh, a lot of work that I presented today comes from this uh, last five to seven years engagement in the Theta project. And I have a lot of people uh, to thank here and I will not uh, go into naming them and I'll leave this slide uh, for a bit. Uh, with this, I would like to thank the organizers of the uh, second annual conference of Epidemiology Foundation of India, particularly uh, Dr. Pradeep Vivedi and uh, uh, Dr. Pankaj uh, for uh, inviting me to this. Um, and I'm happy to take uh, questions.